it's it has like a feeling of you're not always worried because you know mm. that you're doing your job, you're following the super toolkit, you're following the correct steps. So if something goes wrong, you can just fix it because you know that, oh, we have the steps for that. So we can just improve on the steps that you're following. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, and we are recording. Hey, we're going to start. Hey, everyone, welcome to another episode of Win the Hour, Win the Day. And I am your host, Chris Ward. And today we have a super special show. We truly do. I'm really excited about this. We have Deanna Portez in the house. Now, Deanna is going to talk to us about how to have a super crazy productive outsourcer on your team. Is that correct, Deanna? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm really excited with, uh, for this podcast, Chris. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, so we're using the word outsourcer here because that's a term that you know is is it's a keyword. Everyone's asking about it. But if you're working with me, I call it having a team member, and in fact, I call having it a win team, a what is next mm -hmm. team, so that you can get to what is next and what is next. So that's the premise of what we're going to be talking about here today: is how can you have an amazing team? that really, frankly, works independently and not only, you know, does their own work, but to some point manages you. So Deanna, mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk about like what, what, it, what it's like being on your team. <laughs> yes. Okay. So there we did. She gave away the goodies. Okay. Here it is. Deanna is part of my team and we are bringing her on here to talk about what I would say is the three most important things uh, from Deanna's perspective, these are her notes, her three most imp uh, important things to having a crazy productive outsourcer slash team. And she, Deanna, you highlight these as leadership skills, systems and processes and communication. And then there's a bonus mm -hmm. one we'll talk about at the end. Very super important one, very unique that no one else does. So let's talk yes. about that. Deanna, tell us a little bit about, you know, what maybe it was like working other places or what you noticed as far as the difference in working with our team, because you really did talk a lot about leadership in the pre-interview. So tell me what that means to you. What does leadership skills and stuff like that mean to you? Yeah, so uh, basically, Chris, um, I'm just going to give like a little background just so they know. Um, I was I was an outsourcer for more than two years. And this is actually the first time that I have worked with a team just like yours. So it's pretty different from what I've experienced, especially us. Well, a lot of people, a lot of uh, ethnicities say this, that a lot of Filipinos are like too polite. So usually we are kind of submissive to our, um, to our boss. Um, you can say that. Like we don't want to talk back or like if we have some opinions, we just keep it to ourselves because we don't have, we don't have that kind of um, relationship with them, but it's different with, with us because you really empower us to like give ideas and then like no idea is wrong. No. Right. Yeah. So it, that, that is a really great uh team to be a part of and I've also experienced like um I had th this one experience where I know I have a better idea than my boss but I just wouldn't say it because he's some people are not open it's just like you're their you're their employee you don't have to say anything like add add something so it's really different where in this team we can really co collaborate and then share ideas to well because you know let me jump in here you know something i say all the time is i am quite enthusiastic about being the dumbest person in the room so mm -hmm, i yes. do feel i have an amazing team and i want you here because you are going to have great ideas and we and i really push that in the beginning saying look you're not here this is not like a teacher student thing i'm not here mm -hmm. for you to just do as i tell you that's not of any interest to me or any of the clients that we work with in the winner circle, what we want is a strong team. And we all know a team is only as good as its weakest link. Right. And, you yeah. know, you bring up some really good points, Deanna, you, t you know, talk about being fearful of showing up your boss, which is a word I never use. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've ever heard me say that. Right. <laughs> yes, we don't yes. have to use mm -hmm. that word. 
um, talking back and being Filipino and you're known for being polite and submissive. But I would also argue too that I don't think, I mean, I think that your culture is particularly mm -hmm. known for that. Although in Canada, we're known for being pretty nice too. But also what I would say is when you're working with a small business, I did back in the day where I'd be working in a small office, there's like three or four of us. And, and the whole office, it was kind of like that boss was your parent. And when they were in a good mood, the office mm -hmm. was a good day. And, you know, mm -hmm. so you did have this submissive kind of always a barometer of what kind of mood they're in. And they really did yes. dictate you, you know, you're right. You find out too late that, oh, I thought I was helping and I had a great idea and somehow I annoyed them or embarrassed them. So mm -hmm. I think it's not just the Filipino culture. I think sometimes when you get small groups of people, the ego can be a problem, but it just, who cares? Like, let's get more stuff done mm -hmm. is, and, and have more fun doing it. That's my whole thing about that. So I think you're right. I, I think, you know, you know, too, where I am always talking about leadership opportunities and how, mm -hmm. how you speak with confidence and, and own your ideas. And, and even in the beginning, when you had ideas, you'd be like, yeah. oh, I think I have a, Chris, I think I have an idea of this would be yeah. like, <laughs> I'd be like, what's that? Just tell me what your idea is. Uh -huh. Don't, don't soften your voice. And I would say to you, that's not a great leadership mm -hmm. example. So if you have an idea, say, Chris, I think I have an idea. How about we try it this way? And, and then people mm -hmm. will buy into your idea if you've got confidence, but if you sound unsure and you weren't unsure of your idea, but you were unsure of presenting it. So I beat that mm -hmm. out of you pretty quick, didn't right. I? <laughs> yes. And also there was one time where I was saying that it was a small win and then I was pretty shy about it. And then you were saying, no, that's not a small win. That's actually, actually huge um, because I think it's part of like being submissive and also shy. And then um, because mostly um, most uh, works workspace where you're not really encouraged to have your own ideas to, to mm. enjoy and then celebrate your small wins so having having wins was sort of like I was almost ashamed there was a, a kind of feeling like oh should I should I be happy about it should we celebrate uh, it, it was like it it wasn't a great feeling especially that you know you really worked hard for it and I think it's also part of there's not really much recognition you're just like literally an employee you're paid to do your job, nothing else. So like, just, just like, uh, I think the too, and work. I think too, Deanna, it's almost like a task monkey. Like it's almost like you're over mm -hmm. there and this is a work you have. And so get it done. And it's sometimes mm -hmm. it's repetitive, it's data entry and it's very boring. Mm -hmm. And I have no interest in that, not only for myself, but for you guys. And so we're always mm -hmm. making things more and more efficient so we can go on and do the next thing, right? So I think that's mm -hmm. the big difference here is I'm not just handing you a pile of work and then you keep on top of it. We want we want to always be moving forward. There's always something we want to do bigger and better. So it is, mm -hmm. I'm so passionate and interested in having a collaborative team. And if I, mm -hmm. if I don't, if I had to, you know, I, I push a little bit and I teach you these things in the beginning, but seriously, that's the reason why I would get some rid of somebody is like, look, if you can't step up and you're just going to do, as I tell you all the time and put your head down and just do exactly as I tell you, and only what I tell you, then mm -hmm. like, that's then what are you here for? Like, that's that we're looking for. We're looking for people with ideas, with brains, with thoughts, with interests. I always mm -hmm. hire personality over skill set. Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. So you think that, uh, the learning how to have leadership skills, even in your own position, that's a big deal. And yes. then we talk a lot about super toolkits, which are systems and processes. We created a really efficient sort of super systems and processes on steroids. So tell me what it's like working with those parameters in your, in your position. Mm -hmm. So actually when I first started with you and um, Kaisel was training me and then mentioning me the word super toolkit, I was confused. Like what is super toolkit? And then like, what, what's that? Like she was always saying, Oh, just follow the super toolkit. We have that. And I was really confused. Like what, why are we training? Like, um shouldn't you train me shouldn't I like write what I'm supposed to do should I because ah. she was always saying don't remember this because I was like what why don't I have to remember this she said she was always mentioning the super toolkit so I was like really confused like 
what? Because this is the first time that I have ever encountered a super toolkit. So actually, when when it was like two, my first two to three weeks, I actually was just looking at the super toolkit, but I was still remembering my tasks. So mm. basically, it's still it's um it's still using up my brain power. No, In the and beginning, then, yeah, mm-hmm, yes, yeah, because. I wasn't sure, like, what is, uh, I really didn't know what the super toolkit is. And then the process. So, okay, hold on. Let's unpack for a minute because it sounds like we didn't train yeah. you well. Two things. Yeah. <laughs> Two things. I Something you just said that I didn't think about at all right now just hit me like a ton of bricks is you're saying, okay, I'm starting a new job. So I'm taking my own notes and I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So mm-hmm. then the person training you has their approach of doing it. Now you're taking your own notes and you're interpreting a new position in a new job and you're making notes. Mm-hmm. So they're not even going to be great notes because they're new. And so there's yes. no formula that's consistent. There's no recipe that's duplicated. It's like every person's going to come in and take their own notes mm-hmm. and then hand off a version of those notes. So it gets watered down. And because we have these systems and processes and super toolkit that have been developed and are efficient Mm -hmm. and have been proven and we keep editing them, we, we keep queuing them. Do you want to tell what everyone, tell everyone what queuing is? Yes. So queuing them is create, use and edit. So that's for our um, super toolkits for our systems and processes. Perfect. So we're always queuing them. We're always improving them. So by the time you came on, which was really interesting and then we are social, a lot of our work had grown and we started doing TikTok and our social media was growing. So we had to split a position we had and we had mm-hmm. to say, okay, we're really going to expand on this and have someone that just does the social media. And so Kazel, who was leaving to go off to school and her position was two positions. Now we split it and we gave you the social media. You really, we were just new at TikTok when you start, like mm-hmm. barely I knew how to log in. I'm no expert at it now, but mm-hmm. I mean, I do nothing. It was like typing with my mm-hmm. elbows. And because you started with Super Toolkit that Kazel had created, we mm-hmm. didn't have to relearn that. And then you took mm-hmm. us to the next level, like in weeks, because we're like, yeah, this mm-hmm. is what we know. Here's a Super Toolkit. And then you kept adding to it, which is what a Super Toolkit's for, is we're always mm-hmm. creating, using it, editing it. So yes. we were like really off to the races so quickly. And that happens all the time when we do things because the Super Toolkit, you just keep creating, using it, editing Mm -hmm. it. So then it gets proven like, yeah, this works, this doesn't, especially when you're learning something. So Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning, every time she would show you a super toolkit or you'd ask her a new question, she'd say, yeah, we have a super toolkit for that. You kind of thought, oh, you did, you were getting these these pieces of content and showing you how to do something, but Mm -hmm. you didn't understand the umbrella language of a super toolkit. You didn't understand that there'd be a super toolkit for everything. Yes, yes, for everything. So um, I, you, you said a really good point, Chris, because I also thought of it just now, because like for like regular um, workspaces, for example, somebody will resign. It will be, it, you, you mentioned that it will be watered down, which is correct because usually when you pass something to other, per, to another person, they will just mm. like do a shortcut or do what they, they know, which is not which is it's not supposed to be that it's supposed to be like what is the correct steps so you don't miss anything and then the quality is not is not changed yeah so that's a really good point because and then it also when when Kesel was training me it uh it was really efficient because I didn't have to learn everything at once she didn't mm. have to quit um did I forget something it wasn't her remembering that oh did I taught you this did I taught you this step because everything is laid out she was just like showing me so right that's a really good point yeah because then she's going to leave the position or worse lots of times people are hired because somebody has already left and then Mm -hmm. you're like that person left with that knowledge but you're saying like Kazel's not running around going oh what else is there Mm -hmm. oh yeah and then there's this and she throws you Mm -hmm. random pieces of information that don't all fit in one bucket but she's like, mm-hmm. hey, here's a super toolkit for this. Oh, now we're going to, boom, try this. It's all very clear, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So because usually what happens is, for example, somebody already left. So you have to ask your boss, oh, is this the correct step, blah, blah, blah. And usually they don't, oh, we don't know because they're the ones who did it. But mm. we have the super toolkit. And so everything is laid out. You don't, you don't forget anything. Everything is, you can just, 
edit and then start from where they stop. You don't have to start all over again, which is like no, really we're time consuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're learning. You're not relearning from their mistakes, but also as you move forward in the position, you're not constantly relearning things either because you're building on your own strengths. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you just have to like, uh, like what you mentioned on TikTok, like, so, so the basics are laid out so we can just like edit, oh, we can try this. So it's not like really work dumping more work. It's like, Mm. Um, steps you're taking steps. It's not like a cycle where, oh, I forgot this. So should we do this again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. And so I think too, you made a really good point when we were chatting earlier. You're talking about something I say all the time is you felt that it gave you some confidence because then if there is a problem, if there's a problem, Dana, what do we do? Mm-hmm. What do we look at first? So um if when we encounter a problem, we look at our super toolkit, uh, like, oh, there's something wrong. Why is it like that? So um, because of that, I, well, before I had like really bad anxiety when my boss, like, even if it's not my fault, like, oh my God, something happened. Even if it's not my mm. job or like, if it's not my fault, I usually get anxiety because they're always blaming the one who did it. They're blaming the employee where like, what did you do? What, why, why did you forget it? Why did you like skip this? So you're on so the defensive. So you're like, somebody's going to be blamed. Even if I didn't do it or drop the ball, Mm -hmm. I could be the target. And, and Mm -hmm. what do you do? And then if they, no, I didn't do it. Do you blame your coworker? So it's Mm kind of like, there's going to be, you know, stuff's going to hit the fan here. Who's in trouble. But with us, Mm -hmm. if we look at something and we go, oh, there's a problem. The first thing we look at is a super toolkit and say, well, clearly Mm -hmm. there's a step step missing here, or we wouldn't have made that mistake. So then we Mm -hmm. improve the super toolkit. Yes, yes, we improve the super toolkit and not blame the person because we always say that there's a fault. If something goes wrong, there's a fault in the system, not the one yeah. who's working on it. So yeah, that's um actually that's a really great feeling because it's not like you're worried like, oh, am I going to lose my job because of this? You're not, it's like, it's not that you're, what do you call this? It's it has like a feeling of you're not always worried because you know Mm. that you're doing your job, you're following the super toolkit, you're following the correct steps. So if something goes wrong, you can just fix it because you know that, oh, we have the steps for that. So we can just improve on the steps that you're following. You know? Yeah. It's coming from a position of strength. And I think also too, you make a really good point, Deanna. Like if you're worried about getting in trouble and worried about, you know, work tomorrow and worried about your boss being mad at you, that's not going to create more good work. Like you going into work and now you're afraid to make a mistake is just going to say, well, there's no risk taking, there's no new ideas, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're preoccupied and nervous, you know, so then you can't be delivering your best work. So really then Mm -hmm. creates more problems, I think. Yes, because... Usually, um, before with my experience, instead of thinking about the work, I was thinking about, oh my God, am I going to get in trouble today? Mm-hmm. Or like, is, is, is he going to shout at me? Or like, um, mm. is he going to call for a oh, meeting? Oh dear God, <laughs> like shouting that. at you. I would yeah. imagine so- shouting at somebody. <laughs> oh my God. I don't understand that yelling at people. Hello, you're not, I don't think you should yell at your own children. I just, they don't listen to you. Not that that I'm that evolved Mm -hmm. of a person, but nobody hears you when you're yelling, but I certainly would never yell at somebody at work because like, you're, you're not related to me. Go yell at your family. Mm -hmm. If you think that's how you communicate, but all right. So let's talk about communication. So communication was another thing that you highlighted here. So Mm -hmm. to you, what does that mean? So for communication, um, it means for me that, for example, I'm not running around, like we have it, well, it also ties up with the systems and processes because everything is communicated in like our base mm. camp. So yeah. for example, oh, I have like, for example, I have a question. How do I do this? So instead of like going back and forth with like my teammates, I first look at our super toolkits if it's there so I can figure it out myself. Oh, and then if, for example, I'm still confused, it's really easy for us to like ask questions because um even if we have a flexible working schedule we all we have a time where oh i know she's here because this is 
um like a certain time that we're supposed to be here just so we can collaborate right okay so hold on you bring up two really good points so one is we have scrums every day. They're just quick little meetings and they're not mm-hmm. to go over work or for me to check your work. Therefore, you know, mm-hmm. we hop on if we're, tra- especially me, I'm like, okay, Deanna, this is what I want to do. How, mm-hmm. where do I start? Like on TikTok or something like that. So it's a, a place for us to collaborate, brainstorm and have quick information to move us forward on projects. So there's, there's mm-hmm. scrums. That's one thing that's super important. And then the other thing is when you're talking about, uh, communicating. Okay. I'm going to stop stalling. What was the other point you just made? I drifted. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. Hold on. We're talking it's, about uh, it's, it also ties up with systems and processes because we have the super toolkits and then we don't uh, go back and forth. Like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And also you taught us to use Loom, which is very efficient. You okay. Know, I um, had a really stellar point and I do not know what it was, but I'll come back to it. <laughs> I haven't done that before. Usually I write down the words as we're talking, but anyhow, I got so wrapped up in something you said. So we were talking, so it is really important that we do have the scrums and that also the the thing is if, if you have questions, you know what, you just bring them to scrum. We move forward. Mm -hmm. We create a new super super toolkit. It's all good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we also want to talk about job bio. This is something that is really clear. Now let's see, because it's kind of still new to you. Can you describe what a job bio is? So um, a job bio is something that is laid out like your daily tasks. So you don't have to delegate every single thing to us. So for example, every Monday we do this, every Tuesday, this is our task. And in the bottom, we also have the monthly. So we don't have to ask you every day, like, oh, Chris, what should I supposed to do for this day? Like, Chris, what are my tasks? So that is the, I think that's a very uh, great use of job bio because before I would just like sit around and then, oh my God, what I'm, what, what are my tasks today? You know, um, and also because of job bio, we don't have to interrupt anyone. Like, oh, do you know if Chris oh. um, asked me yep, to do yep, yep. this? Okay, hold on. I remember my earlier point. And now I get wrote down the two because you brought up a couple really good points. The other one you talked about was hours and being flexible. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people do with outsourcers. They'll have them work the overnight shift, which I think is crazy because you don't get Mm -hmm. any good work out of anyone at five o'clock in the morning. So if your Mm -hmm. night shift is my day shift, I also think that I'm not doing my work well. If I need you around all day long, then Mm -hmm. that's problem. So we have an overlap that you work to around my lunchtime. So if we're going to have scrums mm-hmm. or we check in in the morning, that's fine. But then the yes. other four hours you can be working when I'm sleeping, which is great because then I get up and more work is done. So I think you, you had touched on flexible hours. And I think that's a really key point because so many people don't know how to utilize that. And, and mm-hmm. we always talk to our clients in the winter circle about, Hey, have the, your team or your outsourcer around in the morning, your time, and they can check out 11, 12 o'clock. That might be 11, 12 o'clock at night for them, mm-hmm. but then you know what? That's fine. It's better than working to five o'clock in the morning. So I think that's a really important point. Mm-hmm. So the other thing too, is I think what the job bio is, which people sometimes confuse with the job description, because when you start a new job, they give you this job description, which by the way, at the end of it, they just say, and any other responsibilities we assign to you. So what the heck? Like mm-hmm. you're just saying, and anything else we ask you to do. So when we're doing work, let's say whatever, uh, you know, I'm asking you to do something for, you're doing some follow-up on a show that I was on as a, as a guest mm-hmm. in a podcast, right? So now it's like, oh, I was on this show. And then there's a systems and process. There's a super toolkit for once I'm on a show, what do we do with that afterwards when we get the file and you follow that? Mm -hmm. That has a deadline because I was on a show and action happened. We created work. We followed the super toolkit and it was created and there's a deadline. But the Mm -hmm. point with the job bio, which you bring up is there's things that you have to do every week that no one kind of tells you to do. It's just something you should be doing. Like on Mm -hmm. Mondays, you're going to be gathering me information about other shows that could potentially be on. So Mm -hmm. you, what we do our guest inspiration list. So you do research on that every Monday. That way it's not like once every six weeks I go, Oh, you know, I haven't been on any shows lately. Go get me a whole bunch. And then we leave Mm -hmm. it for three months and forget, Oh, I had that list, but we use the list. Now we need to make a new list. So the job bio is just a list of responsibilities that you have to do all the time that Mm -hmm. are, are not 
created by somebody else's work. So it's just like, you just in the old, in another job, you just have to remember to do it. Oh, I just do this. Yes. Which is fine, except when you leave or you're on vacation or you're ill that day, somebody else can go look at your job bio and say, oh, we have to, our blog goes up on Thursday. This is what we have to do because she's not mm -hmm. in today, right? So the job yes. bio makes sure that everything's covered. So that's super important. So you mm -hmm. find the job bio helpful. Yes. And also in the job bio, there's a link to the super toolkit. So for mm -hmm. example, I'm not there. They don't have to, oh, she has to do it today, but how do we do it so right. everything is laid out for you like oh so, um so i diana is supposed to do the guest inspiration list oh let's click this and oh there you go Th uh, that's the step so it's it's really easy for anyone to do it like if you're not around which is really helpful like you're not scrambling like nobody's running around like oh my god we have to do this or like yeah, but yeah. we don't know how which is really stressful yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no but who needs that so so I think here in your notes, you talked about not being overworked, not being bored, not being stressed. Well, it sounds like fun because I think business should be yeah. fun. It should be mm -hmm. fun, right? And it should support your yes. life, not consume it. And I don't want you running around thinking about this. I mean, that's another thing too. I think I talked to more about this on the show too, is another thing you notice really quickly, like you log in, you log out. And, and I say to you, do not be checking your emails after hours thinking, oh, is I'm new at my job. And if she has a yeah. question, excuse me, I better make sure I answer because blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. This is not one of those situations. This is a real, you know, we've got a real setup here with a beginning mm -hmm. and end to your shift so that you don't have all these things floating around your brain, stressing you out. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, actually, that's really also a good point because uh, before, like when I was working like maybe two weeks uh, there was this time that I was, I think I was about to go dinner. Uh, I was about to eat my dinner and then I forgot to, it's like I didn't uh, put like I was away for like 30 minutes. And then in, you you messaged me and then are you around? And then I panicked, oh my God, she's looking for me. So I had to drop my dinner and then, and then <sighs> um, log back and I'm oh, Chris, yes, I'm here. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, that was like really stressful. But well you thought us like for example just because i messaged you it doesn't mean that for example you have to log in you can just say oh chris i just came back because um i ate lunch because usually before i really had this like panic and anxiety like oh my god she, oh, she's just looking for me oh my god am i in trouble so right now it's not like that. Yes. No, it's not like that. So a couple of things, what we do is if you're away from the computer, you say, Hey, I'll mm -hmm. be back in an hour. I'm having dinner. No problem. Not a big deal. And then mm -hmm. sometimes too, like, I think in that particular day I was in between, I was on a bunch of podcasts that day and I had a quick question for you and I didn't have time to check my email where you log out. And I was like, Hey, are you still around? And you're mm -hmm. like, Oh, I was on a break. Cause I went to have dinner. And I, and then when you came back, I said to you, listen, I just didn't have time to check if you had logged in or out. That's on me. Mm -hmm. But I was just saying, I have a quick question because it was something about the podcast. If you had mm -hmm. logged out and you're away having dinner, then when me looking for you, that's on me. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I'm like, oh, I didn't. Um, thank you. No problem. I didn't see you away. My mistake, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And I said to you, don't ever panic when I'm looking for you because I know you log in and out. And if you, and if you didn't, then I would say to you, uh, in the beginning, I said, listen, you can go have dinner. You just have to have, tell us, go have dinner with your family. You yes. just have to tell me that you're gone for a half hour. So mm -hmm. I know I'm not looking for you. But if I was looking for you really quickly, because I had two seconds and forgot something, and that doesn't happen very often because we're all yes, really yes. leaning in our systems and processes. Mm -hmm. But if I did, that's the thing. Because we have everything so set up effectively, it's you'll never be in a panic because because mm -hmm. my behaviors won't be erratic because we're following the calendar. We're following the super toolkit. So it's not mm -hmm. this mayhem of, oh no, a ro where most people have rotating set of emergencies, which really mm -hmm. impacts our mood. We don't go through that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also I... I remember like with the job bio that we had, um, I think this happened like a couple of weeks ago, we were able to interchange tasks easily without oh, having yeah. to train for like a few days. It's just like on the spot, like, oh, uh, we will transfer this task to you because we already have the super toolkit. And it yeah. was pretty easy because if like it's from a different business, you have to have like maybe that week you will be having the calls and then training and then you have to ask all the questions because 
it's not laid out for you like um what we have just like what happened with chris yes i think with chris what happens is because the super toolkits are so well laid out is it really allows me to see who has different strengths in different areas because you're not running around doing busy work so chris was doing the slideshows for my coaching in the winner's circle and she was doing them like I would do them. They were very structured. They all kind of had a formula, but I'm like, I think she's doing them because I asked her to do them, but she doesn't love <laughs> doing them. And when I asked her about that, she goes, yeah, I'm not very creative. I'll, I can put it out, lay it out, but you seem to be really creative. So I said, well, why don't we see if Chris wants to give those to Deanna, you love them. You did a mm -hmm. much better job. She was relieved, which again, there was no blame, no whatever, but because mm -hmm. everybody's following super toolkits so we're like, okay, just give that to her. She was happy and you, mm -hmm. and I got much better slides and she got relief, but it took like, mm -hmm. we just, we just said, here's the super tool kit mm -hmm. for it. And you did it. Like it was no, yeah. you didn't spend even, you know, a half hour with her. You just got the super toolkit mm -hmm. and you followed it. Right. So that brings yes. really good points. Yeah. We could, mm -hmm. oh, well, I could talk to you all day, Deanna, as we do. So, <laughs> all right, everyone else, I hope you learned <laughs> something here from our brilliant Deanna. I, uh, this is, you know, I brought her here, you know, at first she kind of gasped a little bit, but she came on the show. She did a spectacular job, but I have to say, you guys have no idea. I don't know. I'm sure her brilliance, some of it came out in this interview, but if you knew, if you knew how amazing <laughs> she was and how much work she provides for me and oh boy, oh boy, boy, oh boy. Anyhow, I clearly by a long shot, and I am the dumbest person in the room when my team mm -hmm. is here. So Deanna, I thank you for your time and your energy mm -hmm. and everyone else. I will see you in the next episode.